Here's a Japanese toy I've had for many years, which shows a very old mechanism, in fact, which probably came out of the Middle Ages. This is obviously made in a factory, and there's many parts to it. And you see the idea, it swings around, and it winds around the pole, and unwinds, and back and forward it goes. But still available, and still being made by, in craft toy markets, there are a whole series of the same thing. Some people just call it the swing thing. Um, I don't know what else to call it. And the idea is you're supposed to wind up the, the, uh, the piece of rich. I'll do it this way like this actually, it's a quick way of doing it. In order to get some energy into the elastic and when you release it, the ball at the end will, just like with that penguin, will whiz round back and forward, winding and unwinding on the pole. Here it goes, which does it. So it wraps and it speeds up as it's wrapping, which is rather nice actually. And it whips round with a lot more energy and does it again. This is the, probably the min most minimalistic version I've ever come across by an artisan, Tony Shaw, I haven't seen for many years now. But um, a whole range of different versions of the same thing. Some of them are extraordinarily elaborate. This one here, which is interesting, it's got two. And what happens here is that once you set the thing going, you find that um, you have the, the, there has to be some synchronization, because if there isn't, there's one unwrapping, it reaches the end, it tries to fly off, but it can't, because the other one's still attached. We'll see if we can get that effect with this one here working. So they're both wrapping away now, wrapping and unwrapping. This one's already unwrapped, but look, it can't free itself because this one is still working. So it's going to do a few more jigs before its partner is ready to go, and away it goes. And this time it's missed it. So there's a nice bit of chaotic motion here, which I like with these craft toys as well. But you can see how simple some of them are to make, and that's why quite a lot of craftspeople, and I've seen them many times at craft fairs, make these type of things. Going back to the very simple and minimalistic version, one of these ladies who's Pippa Greenwood, who made my wonderful nestling jack in the box, made a number of these for me. And this is the most vigorous one she ever made, I think it was. It's got a lot of energy, this one here. It helps also to have an el elastication on the, um, on the piece of string there that's holding the, the, the ball, because it, it means there's a little bit more energy as it unwraps itself. That's got a lot of energy to it. And then there's a very elaborate one here with a deep black one. That's going to do a performance as well, hopefully. This one, rather curiously, she just has a piece of elastic which has got elastication within, within the actual... I'll wind it up like this first. Within, within the thread. It isn't an actual, a, 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 any old elastic band. It has to be a particular band that she's created. There we are. We've got some energy in this rubber band now. And then it'll whoops, whoop, swing around with tremendous speed. So there's a lot of energy in that elastic band and it's able to perform its gyration probably hit me as it's coming around this time. And some of the mechanisms, they can go on for a long, long time too. I've seen versions that um, I think must have been done in the Middle Ages with a little knight in armour going around four stations, ramping and unwrapping, sort of north, south, east, west, right, like a compass point, and the whole thing acts like a kind of um, escape mechanism for a clock. So, a, a great little toy, this, um, and something that uh, anyone with a bit of uh, craft ability could easily manufacture themselves at home in their, in their home workshop. The swing thing is all I can call it. I love it. <laughs>